Namaskar, uh, hello and welcome to the History Forum 2022. Uh, today we are commemorating uh, the very celebrated occasion of the 135th birth anniversary of the legendary historian, uh, Professor Ramesh Chandra Majumdar, uh, <coughs> uh, by way of this History Forum. And today we have the great good fortune uh, to recognize uh, the contributions of three very eminent history educators from across three very distinctive corners of this great nation. Uh, we would be felicitating uh, Matthew K.G. Sir, uh, coming from Mysuru down south uh, from the lovely state of Karnataka. Uh, we have uh, Madam Jhilmili Das, uh, who is a history educator uh, from Kolkata, uh, South Point High School. And Madam Ansi Joseph, uh, a history educator from the 
central India from uh, the lovely city of Gwalior, the city where uh, the Jhansi ki Rani, the legendary Jhansi ki Rani gave her supreme sacrifice out there. So three eminent history educators, their works, uh, how they are furthering the cause of the history of Indian people and culture. Uh, but since it is the birth anniversary of uh, Professor R.C. Majumdar, we would really like to give a short uh, brief about Professor Majumdar. He was uh, uh, the legend uh, of uh, Professor Majumdar. Uh, he lived between uh, 4th of December 1888 uh, uh, till 11th of February 1980. And he was a historian and the professor of Indian history. Uh, he was, uh, his expertise was pre predominantly in the modern history of India. And he was also uh, the former sheriff of Kolkata. This is very interesting in his long uh, checkered career. He came from a Vaidya family. Uh, he was born in Kandarapara, Gopal Ganj, Bengal Presidency uh, in the British India, which has now come to Bangladesh, uh, to Haldhar Majumdar and Vitu Mukhi. So those were her parents. In 1905, uh, Professor Majumdar, he passed his entrance examination from Ravenshaw College, Katak. Uh, and in 1907, uh, 1905, the bang bang we all uh, get to know and uh, Professor Majumdar was very, very categorical that the entire Indian uh, freedom struggle, uh, it catapulted from the bang bang movement. And in 1907, he passed his uh, FA with first class scholarship from Surendranath College and joined Presidency College, Calcutta, uh, graduating in BA honours and MA from Calcutta University in 1909 and 1911. Now, all these years, if you can see, these are very epochal years, which we all history educators, which we all remember in the checkered history of modern India, our glorious freedom struggle. These are all years uh, which we all cherish uh, in our classrooms. And he won the Premchand Roy Chand Scholarship from the University of Calcutta uh, for his research work in, uh, yeah, please. So, so Majumdar, Professor Majumdar, he started his teaching career as a lecturer at Dhaka Government Training College. And since 1914, he spent seven years as a professor of history at the University of Calcutta. And he got his doctorate for his thesis, the title of his thesis was uh, Corporate Life in Ancient India. In 1921, again a very epochal date in Indian history, he became a professor of history in the newly established University of Dhaka. He also served until he became uh, the Vice Chancellor of the Dhaka University as the head of the Department of History as well as the Dean of the Faculty of Arts between 1924 and 1936, he was the prov provost of Jagannath Hall. And then he became the vice chancellor of uh, Dhaka University for five years from 1937 to 1942. And from 1950, uh, Professor Majumdar uh, was the principal of the College of Indology at Banaras Hindu University. He was elected as the general president of the history, Indian History Congress and also became the vice president of the International Commission set up by the UNESCO for the history of mankind. Uh, Professor Majumdar started his research on ancient India after extensive travels to Southeast Asia and research. He wrote detailed histories uh, of Champa, Suvarnadipa and Kambujadesha. Uh, and on the initiative of uh, the Bharati Vidya Bhavan, one of his biggest contributions to Indian history, he took up the mantle of editing a multi-volume tome on Indian history. Starting in 1951, he toiled for 26 long years to describe the history of the Indian people from the Vedic period until the independence of India in 11 volumes. In 1955, uh, Professor Majumdar established the College of Indology of Nagpur University and joined as principal. 
And in 1958-59, uh, he taught Indian history in the University of Chicago and University of Pennsylvania. He was also the president of the Asiatic Society uh, for uh, between 1966 and 68. And the Bangiya Sahitya, Sahitya Parishad uh, from 68 to 69. And he was also the sheriff of Calcutta uh, from 67 to 68. And when the final volume of the history and culture of the Indian people, the 11 volume tome uh, uh, was published in 1977, he had turned 88. And uh, he also edited the three volume history of Bengal published by Dhaka University. And his last book was... Uh, Jivaner Smriti Duipe. And the proposal to write on freedom movement uh, with government sponsorship was uh, put forth in 1948 by Professor R.C. Majumdar. And in 1952, the Ministry of Education appointed Board of Editors for the compilation of the history. Uh, Professor Majumdar was appointed by the board as the director and he was interested with the work of sifting and collecting materials and preparing the draft of the history. However, the board as consisting of politicians and scholars, as it always happens, it was least likely to function harmoniously. And perhaps this was the reason why it was dissolved at the end of uh, 1955. And the scheme remained in balance for a year until the government decided to transfer the work onto a single scholar. Uh, to the disappointment of Professor Majumdar, uh, the choice of the Ministry of Education fell on one Tara Chan a historian, but also an ex-secretary of the Ministry of Education. And Professor Majumdar then decided to write independently uh, the history of the freedom movement in India in three volumes. And when the government of India set up an editorial committee to author a history of the freedom of struggle of India, he was its principal member. But following a conflict with the then education minister, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad, on the Sipoy mutiny, he left the government job and published his own book, so, uh, which was titled as The Sepoy Mutiny and Revolt of 1857. Uh, so as per Professor Majumdar, the origins of India's freedom struggle lie in the English-educated Indian middle class and the freedom struggle started with the Bang Bhang movement of 1905. And his views on the freedom struggle are found in his book History of the Freedom Movement in India. And he was an ardent admirer of Swami Vivekananda and then Ramakrishna Paramahansa. So this was a small uh, ode and tribute uh, to Professor R.C. Majumdar who gave us uh, this uh, prolonged, uh, very objective history and culture of Indian people. And reading this uh, 11 volume tome is like poetry. It's like a real uh, mesmerizing experience. And Professor Majumdar, he used to say that history should be written based on sound proof and reasoning and not focused around famous personalities. And uh, today when we are uh, commemorating, when we are felicitating the three very eminent history educators from across the country, uh, at times we are asked uh, in today's, I would say, age of artificial intelligence, automation, and all kind of futuristic technology that what remains the relevance of history now, this is one question which we will really uh, like uh, uh, to pose it to our uh, history educators whom we will be felicitating. Because at times, teaching history, creating that uh, tantalizing experience, creating that teaching paradigm. And we were really so very enthralled uh, to receive uh, the lovely submissions from across and uh, and uh, some of uh, uh, we, we would just like to play even like uh, the ex-students, uh, they have spoken on forums like TEDx about their history educators. Now that was quite a, quite, that is quite a testimony to that educator over there. So yes, history education is going on in a big way in our schools. And history is just the compilation of what all is happening in our contemporary times. Every, every day becomes a history the next very day. So in order to build a grand future, obviously a very pinpointed uh, uh, reflection of what transgressed in the past uh, has to be there in the present to build a grand future. This is what uh, the simplistic answer we feel. 
And if we really want to build a very glorious future, we have to really look back into the past of all the human transactions which have happened. And then and then only we can strategize in the current to really build up a glorious future. So uh, we would uh, move on to the very, I would say, exciting part of today's commemoration of the History Forum. And we would li really like to invite our uh, eminent educators today uh, who uh, to, to really speak out on uh, uh, on 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 the various aspects uh, of history education, how they are really uh, uh, structuring it. Uh, so, just present, yes. Studying history also gives us pride in the civilization, you know. I think it's very important that where we are today, we are deeply rooted and anchored in, in our roots. We can, you know, uh, march for the future in a much more stronger and powerful fashion. So, what do you say? Yeah. So first and the foremost, I would really, uh, from this August forum, we would like to felicitate uh, uh, Matthew KG, sir, uh, who, uh, who from being a history educator himself, he rose to the a prominent position of the principal at Excel Public School, Mysore, Karnataka. And he is being felicitated with the Professor R.C. Majumdar Honor 2022 for history educators for his grasp and innate understanding of how the origin and evolution of the socio-political legacy of the country manifests itself uh, through contemporary events. So he has really juxtaposed history with contemporary events in a very fabulous manner. We would like to invite uh, Matthew KG, sir, to accept this token tribute from this August forum and further illumine us as to how he takes on <clears throat> the history education, furthering uh, the history and culture of Indian people in his classrooms. And we would really love to play a small uh, TEDx video, uh, <clears throat> which uh, one of his students, uh, 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 he, he refers to... Uh, 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 KG, uh, Matthew KG, sir, in one of the very august forums. And this is very, uh, there cannot be a better tribute uh, to an educator than his own student uh, really referring him back uh, at one of such august forums over there. Let, let's hear this small clip uh, about Matthew KG, sir. We all have our favorite teachers that we fondly remember. remember. Mine, for instance, was this gentleman in the photo, Mr. Matthew KG. Matthew sir was my history teacher, but but beyond that, he was he was a funny guy. He was inspirational. He was engaging. He was a great storyteller. He was very knowledgeable. He inspired me to think beyond the box, and he had a huge influence on, on how I uh, grew up as a, as a child and a student. So what a testimony uh, of uh, I would say a teacher uh, <clears throat> in Matthew KG sir. I would now like in, to invite uh, Matthew KG sir. Uh, to please uh, accept this to contribute and enlighten us further. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Yeah, at the outset, uh, let me express my sincere <laughs> gratitude uh, to Rethink India for considering me for this award and that to an award institute in the name of Dr. Asi Majumta. You know, some of my basic lessons on history, especially the history of modern India. I learned from uh, R.C. Majumta's History of Freedom Movement in India, a copy of which I still maintain. I uh, got a, a deeper ah, understanding of history uh, through this book. I would also like to uh, appreciate uh, my two other history teachers uh, who are present in this forum, uh, Mrs. Uh, Chakrabarti and uh, Ms. Annie Joseph. You know, history as uh, a subject, I'm sure the teachers would agree. Um, it, it's not something uh, that is being considered as a very important subject to be a part of the curriculum. Uh, I, I, I don't remember who said that Indians' sense of history is, is very poor. Now, the small video that uh, you played, uh, in fact, uh, I taught him uh, social studies in class 10 uh, about 22 years back. And he did not pursue history as a subject for higher studies. He's a product of IIT Mumbai and then Indian Institute of um, Science, Bangalore. 
He's a successful entrepreneur and uh, uh, has made big you know, slide. And he asked me for my photograph. I mean, it was just uh, a surprise for me. He didn't tell me, sir, can you just share me a photograph? Then after this TEDx, uh, he shared it with me. I felt so happy. I think uh, that was the one of the best awards that I received as a social studies teacher. In fact, uh, until uh, Rethink India shared uh, uh, the, the particular information about, I didn't even know that there are some awards to recognize the contribution of uh, history teachers in India. <laughs> because <laughs> I think it's teaching is more about science and maths and uh, this what uh, this generation is all about. But I always feel, um, you know, history as a subject it needs to be given a lot more importance. And that's where I have my admiration to R.C. Majumdar, as you so rightly said. A history of any nation shouldn't be centered around the personality cult. It has to be very objective. It has to be very transparent. And the narration of history has to be based on scientific evidences and proof. So we, we are uh, living in a nation where history as a subject has been subjected to maximum misuse and abuse at all times. Uh, a very, very controversial uh, subject, uh, social studies has been, because every government, when they come to power, I think the first thing that they try to do is to change the social studies curriculum, especially the history textbooks. History gets rewritten. So maybe, uh, you know, there is an inconsistency in the, in the narration of history that we have been learning you know, over the past uh, 20, 30 years that I've been a history teacher. But I think it's very important that our children are made to understand the richness uh, of our nation, our nation's culture, tradition, values, and the glorious evolution of our nation's history. You know, I don't uh, think many countries in the world can claim of having um, such um, uh, uh, a history such that uh, we have as a nation and the number of people who have contributed to the making of history. But unfortunately, as I said in the beginning, the present generation uh, do not seem to be fascinated by or excited uh, uh, by our nation's history. And uh, being a history teacher, I would say a part of the blame lies on the social studies teachers, because we do not uh, you know, uh, succeed in igniting the imagination of our students or creating a love for the subject uh, among these generations. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that uh, two of my social studies teachers uh, who have been honored on this occasion and uh, some of my social studies teachers are also joined uh, during this virtual meeting. So let us uh, do everything possible to give our children an understanding, uh, a, 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 a very, very objective understanding of our nation's history. Uh, somebody said, uh, history repeats. And the reason is we don't learn anything from history. So let, let us uh, make our children feel happy and proud of being born and living in a country as India. And let them also have I mean, irrespective of what subject they choose to pursue in their high studies, an understanding and knowledge and an appreciation for one's own country's history. I think uh, it's, it's very important uh, to live as uh, worthy citizens of any nation. If you want to claim yourself to be a responsible citizen, that responsible has to be a result of your true understanding and appreciation of your nation's history and your sense of gratitude to all those people who contributed to the making of the history of this nation. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, sir, as uh, rightly pointed out, that what the importance of history out there and Professor Arshti Majumdar's work, we will... Uh, look deeply over there. He has devoted uh, separate sections on the history of economics uh, uh, of that period uh, in every volume. The history of science and technology, that is again a very specialized area which uh, Professor Majumdar has put emphasis upon. The history of the press of those times, uh, he has also tried to uh, build up over there. So probably, uh, as uh, Matthew K.G. sir said, that to bring in the historical aspects to contemporary times and to extrapolate it, the happenings of the past uh, to the future uh, projections, I think that is where the history can be really made an exciting and a very relevant uh, subject. And uh, that will really entice our young generation uh, to really take a leap of faith and build a, a grand, uh, I would say, country uh, contributions over there. Uh, moving forward, we would really uh, now like to recognize Madam Jilmili Das. 
uh, who is a history educator at the South Point High School, Kolkata, uh, for the incorporation in history education. Uh, we have been seeing a lot of uh, flow charts and mind maps. This is what uh, uh, her submission came through as to how we can really make the timelines, the historical chronology is really very exciting. How we can incorporate visual aids. She has brought in a lot of cartoons, characters, uh, uh, to just uh, create a fun out of it. The, the politics, what we witness in contemporary times, there was politics in the past. Whatever is happening in, in the current moment, everything actually happened. Every contour of it happened in the past and history is just an account of it all. Uh, then uh, interpretations, uh, collating sources, uh, case studies. Uh, the case studies are not just in the B schools alone. Uh, case studies can also be brought about into, into the, I would say, hoary presence of history classes as well. And then uh, she uh, takes so much of uh, pain in conducting a lot of debates and symposiums around the historical uh, uh, precepts over there. We would now like to invite uh, Madam Jilmili Das Chakravarti uh, to accept this token tribute from this August forum. Uh, and uh, in the name of uh, the legendary Professor R.C. Majumdar, sir, and also enlighten us further uh, over here, Madam Jirmili Das. Good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, loud and clear. Yeah. yeah, but my video, I think I cannot just uh, see my... It's not you, visible. You are, you are visible, madam. You can go on. We can see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you all. Thank you, Rethink India, for giving me this uh, opportunity. Thank I thank uh, other co educators, history educators who have received this honor. And I would like to thank principal of my school who has sent, who has thought that I am deserving of this nomination. And regarding the name which is associated, this honor, R.C. Mojumdar, it really means a lot because I'm also from Bengal. Maybe uh, as a history teacher, I should not sound, I should not have any regional bias, but still, Still, it matters. A great historian from my state who has uh, been accepted uh, throughout India as a great historian and whose writings and whose contributions form the groundwork for other historians who are uh, now working on different aspects, historical aspects. Now, I would like to uh, tell that uh, the name of R.C. Mojumdar, with the name of R.C. Mojumdar, I just go back to my college days, that orange book, Advanced History of India. Yes, a uh, feeling, a nostalgic feeling, an attachment with that book. And what I feel is, the study of history, the way we studied when we were student, the approach has changed a lot. Modern historians, there is now, the focus has changed, the approach has changed, but the approach and the focus that has changed and uh, the basis on which the modern historians are working on the groundwork was prepared by historians like R.C. Mojumdar. Maybe these days students, they <coughs> prefer reading other books, other research papers, uh, they, and they collate these sources, they collate these writings and they arrive at a conclusion. Now, if we interpret, if we collate, if we give examples from case studies, I think that will make the teaching of history much more interesting if we integrate. If we integrate history with other disciplines that we always do, 
Suppose we are teaching a topic on industrial revolution. We integrate that topic with science. We integrate that topic with economics. We integrate, we can integrate that topic with profit and loss mathematics also. We can integrate that topic with the social uh, lifestyle. That is the different classes, class society, sociology also. So history is such a subject which is so broad which can integrate many subjects. It's an all-in-one subject. It's a broad subject. And we can make the study of history much more interesting if we look at all these aspects. I think students, what Sir has said right now, that these days there is a focus on, we ask what, what your son has taken up. He has taken up engineering or medicine. Now, social studies or social science, the focus on social science is uh, compared to other subjects, it's much less. But these days, it's a very good news that there are institutes like Tata Institute of Social Science and other institutes which are coming up, which are giving much more emphasis on history and other disciplines related to social science. So it's, uh, and these organizations are coming up to uh, give honors to history educators. It is a very positive thing. I hope other history educators will also agree with my viewpoint and uh, Receiving this honor really makes me feel great, more so because the name of the honor is associated with Ramesh Chandra Mojumdar. And thank you, thank you Rethink India for giving me this opportunity to be a part of the History for Forum. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. And as you said, rightly said that uh, history is the convergence of all disciplines. It's a very all-in-one kind of a subject. And beautifully, like uh, we are moving towards, as we are saying, the fourth industrial revolution, the convergence of the various uh, scientific and technological disciplines is happening as of today. So similarly, history really converges into it. Almost all frontiers of, uh, I would say, human pursuits so the prominence uh, and the dominance of history educators uh, uh, would always remain. Yes, uh, uh, in the passing phases, uh, there might be some uh, some hap hap things happening. But the way you have presented it, the way you have modernized history education in your classroom by bringing in all these tools uh, to really make that classroom very exciting. Uh, had we been uh, the time, we would like to share. Madam's pedagogical slides, which was uh, shared as a part of the nomination process. So this really makes uh, the pedagogy of it. And as uh, Matthew KG sir's uh, small video, what his students shared. So you instill a lot of, I would say, softer parts of your learning curve, which become quite very important in whatever professional pursuits you go over there. So thank you so much, uh, Jilmili ma'am, uh, to really honor this history forum and share your insights out there. We move, now move on uh, to a very eminent uh, location, uh, the, the lovely land of Gwalior and uh, the seat of uh, Sindhya Kanya Vidyalaya. Uh, we have uh, Madam Ansi Joseph uh, uh, to receive this uh, humble token tribute uh, from this August forum and for making history education personalized, interactive and interdisciplinary. So these are the three hallmarks which Madam N.C. Joseph is pursuing at her history classrooms. And she's now guiding the entire social studies department out there uh, from the vantage of history education uh, to make it more lively, more personalized. And that is what is the future of education all about. We request Madam N.C. Joseph uh, to uh, accept this token tribute and also address the forum. Thank you, sir. I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, loud and clear. Very much. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you for uh, thinking about me. And, uh, you know, actually, it came as a surprise to me. 
and um, i really would like to thank my principal mrs nishi mishra because she thought that i'm worthy of it uh, at the first place and uh, thank you to uh, you all for uh, considering me and uh, you know actually just one one and a half hour before i came to know that i'm supposed to be here so i just hurried up <clears throat> i did not prepare any speech so whatever i am going to say will be from dil se all right <laughs> i hope that is fine dil se right. is the best ma'am any time okay. yes all right okay see i joined this school of course i had been a social science teacher i joined this school somewhere in 2011 and when i joined the Uh, i mean in the history class i could find only really five children in the first year so i was really taken up why children are not taking up humanity subject history in particular so then they said what is the need of reading about what has happened what so and so has done have done that is immat- immaterial to us today then i had to take those children and we did a case study in fact and i made them i tried to make them realize what is the value of the value that is attached to the the subject and the first thing they understood was that yes the history students are they are more humane we are more of uh, we feel for others and uh, we think for others and we do we go out of our way who what makes us do is that i think the values that the children the students that they learn in the history class and then i try to i asked them this yeah uh, do you think that uh, medicine biology does not have a history do you really think that maths does not have a history do you think that your computer science these days a artificial intelligence and this and that do you really think that does not have a history i made them think i made them uh, i wanted them to to understand it not because i said it i wanted them to realize what is actually what is our life our values from where it has come and i told my students the next year the the students who had to come in the next year i said to my dear children if you cannot make a history please do not take up history as a subject mm-hmm. and uh, the change i think it started from there and i have my students and if at all i had any idea i would have actually sent those uh, i mean the testimonies and all that and uh, then what we did was that i said that we need to learn the history of our school i took the children back to 1956 where rajmata vijay rajesindhya when she started so i tried to show them the 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 way they had thought for so i said the history starts with our family i asked my children to go back to the family of course ours is a residential school so i asked the children go back to your family look for the history how many of you know who are your grandparents do you know their names so this is the way i got my children into into learning instead of history i would say it is the human values the values where it is being i mean these days i feel that it is very rarely that but then i have examples to give to them even if i have to go back to the great emperor ashoka or uh, anybody any of any of them for that matter so they love history now it is not they don't do it because they can't do any other subject but they do it because they love it and my children are actually they are making they are making history i should say that uh, they are making history now and coming back to sir majumdar sir 
of course in my graduation i read about him and of course it was maybe it will be too much i don't know how you people will take it but i was fascinated by his smile and uh, his photograph on the on my textbook in graduation was something kept fascinating and i wanted to read it his smile smile told me something like it was it was there was a connection like i don't know how to explain it to you so that's it i think ma'am the connection you had mentioned very well in your uh, small speech that the human values which history expounds uh, that uh, values actually have that connection and that smile that deep contentment of having chronicled what has happened out there and this is how madam nc joseph has really made history education so very personalized so very interactive and so very interdisciplinary when she talked to her students don't you see that even your mathematics even your computer science it has a history behind and until or unless you understand it you relish it you admire it you probably won't be creating history in your own discipline now this is something which is uh, so 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 very i would say inspiring and uh, that is what uh, made a uh, rethink india uh, and madam nishi uh, mishra's uh, nomination of madam ansi joseph is so very worthy out there uh, now uh, we would we are just at the close of this short very sweet ceremony on a sunday afternoon uh, but then uh, a contemporary history is being created so my uh, i would say a small query a small ask at this forum at the culmination of this forum as to how you history educators see how the history of the current epoch when it will be written uh, how do you see uh, it will be written in what form because history is being created every passing moment so what are your reflections on the contemporary history which is being made so i would just uh, some 2 2 minutes of your reflections on this uh, key ask uh, because as uh, 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 i would say uh, matthew sir has said that he has brought about history to the contemporary life but then down uh, in future when we will look back at this epoch so how will it will be defined so uh, this is small ask to all our three awardees this afternoon uh, may i yeah ma'am please please yeah. yeah now writing history while writing history one thing is very important that is who is writing and for whom you are writing now suppose the history of a king if the king commis- commissions someone to write about him he will obviously praise the king not write any negative points that that we have read and we know that so that is very important here so this when we are writing history history to be give us an uh, authentic idea uh, the truth to discover the truth we need to collate again that is very important the different views and then arrive at writing uh, but it doesn't happen always but this part is very important that we need to have an impartial understanding but even if you have an impartial understanding we all have a mindset we all have an inclination even if i am impartial maybe uh, from within i may develop some bias towards writing history like revolt of 1857 about the revolt the british historians point of view is different and the point of view of the indian historians it's different so this interpretations these debates this uh, uh, will uh, we will uh, carry on with these debates and in the long run what we will get the net result that we are going to get will be proper history i think so mm-hmm. uh, so very pertinently said uh, maybe matthew sir would like to add upon his reflections yeah uh, now this this particular question is a very very uh, tricky question i would rather say um you know history has always been written by the winners <laughs> <laughs> you know the losers have not written history um, we we only have epitaph for the 
the people who lost it. Mm-hmm. Uh, as uh, Madam Chakravarti said, you know, who writes history and for whom is it written? Uh, we all know that the Indian Council of Historic Research that we have in our country, the appointment itself is a big uh, controversy because most of these appointments are political appointments, not uh, appointments based on uh, their uh, approach towards history. I mean, uh, sorry for being a little cynical about it, but uh, uh, I mean, not that I have any any political affiliation, but I'm, I'm quite worried as a, a student of history uh, and as, a, as a, a small teacher of history. I mean, history is not a subject that can be distorted uh, to uh, suit the, uh, you know, the whims and fancies of people who uh, encourage people to be uh, documenting it. And you can't have court historians in today's world. History has to be as objective, as realistic as it can be if our next generation have to appreciate it and uh, have to uh, develop a sense of love towards it. Uh, I think uh, it's Madam Ansi who said, you know, I mean, I, it's actually, I, I really felt happy that, you know, you ask our children to write the history of their own families mm. or ask the students of your school to uh, write the history of your school and then probably go back to the founders of your uh, educational institutions and what triggered uh, their interest in coming up with an educational institutions. And I think what um, as teachers or as people who uh, still uh, look at social studies or history as a subject uh, worthy of being considered as an academic uh, subject, uh, if we can do similar exercises, our students will understand the value of history. Uh, I, I was very, I felt very happy. You know, people see the problem is uh, the West always looks at history as a very very important subject. But in our country, education has always been given the importance of something that prepares them for an employment. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that is why even today, you know, they look at subjects that would fetch them a better job. Uh, Not something, you know, people don't love for the love of learning. Uh, People love and learn more because, uh, you know, returns on investment. (laughs) That's what we still look at it. Uh, But... I think, uh, I mean, you see, history of mankind itself is something, uh, you know, there is a cycle. Mm -hmm. And we have gone through uh, all forms of government, uh, all phases of human history, uh, from Holocaust to uh, Renaissance, or Renaissance to Holocaust, and then reawake. I mean, I think history repeats in certain places. And uh, I'm I'm sure I'm positive, confident, and hopeful that there will be a day uh, when our uh, our children, our students, look at history as a must and should learn subject and something that needs to be appreciated for uh, whatever it is. Because when you ignore history, you're ignoring your forefathers, you're ignoring the contributions of your forefathers, you are uh, ignoring how we became what we are today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think uh, it's the history teachers that matter. Mm-hmm. You can't blame the students for disliking history and then uh, honoring the history teachers. So uh, I think it's the history teachers, or the social studies teachers who can do these miracles. I was very, very happy to hear about some of those wonderful experiments that uh, Madam Chakravarti and Madam Ansi mm-hmm. Joseph try in their class. Uh, if all the social studies teachers uh, make such a, a conscious effort, first of all, let's, as social studies teachers, let us appreciate history let us appreciate our subject. Uh, let's develop a kind of a passion for our subject. And a teacher always uh, ignites uh, the imagination of the learners. So how history is being narrated in today's world is not very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Adolf Hitler's historians wrote a history where Nazi movement was considered to be the best thing that could happen uh, for any generation or any, any, human, any, any people in the world. And maybe it took a little time for us to understand, you know, that was a falsification of history. So time will tell. Time will tell uh, whether our narrative of what's happening today was uh, the best way of putting it across. But our classrooms, uh, I think, can become places where our children are able to look at. uh, Let's take um, uh, the learning of history beyond the textbooks and beyond the classrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, now I think we have more history teachers uh, who write, uh, um, you know, the, the question banks for social studies to pass the board examinations than people who actually want to write history uh, to give them a clear understanding of what is history. 
so I think our teachers can be the real role models. And their Lovely. love and their passion can take our children to. I think one of the history. very important point what Matthew sir has touched upon is contextualizing the purpose of history. And as NC Ma'am has said that, uh, the history of my very family, the very school, the very institution I am associated with. Because at times the youngsters are not able to relate with what is the relevance of that history. So as the history of my discipline, if it is computer science or mathematics, so I will be like history has to be shown in that perspective. I think the closing words of NC Mem and uh, probably we will close with any questions or comments from our lovely audience who is uh, listening to us uh, on this history forum as well. And to any question to all of our three educators uh, who have been honored today. So NC Mem, uh, your take on uh, the key ask. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, actually when I take, for example, it was the revolt of 1857. When I, uh, when I took the class, my students asked me a question. Uh, there is very little that is said about the, I mean, the, the view of Indians, the Sepoys or the Indians then who fought, very little we can find. But uh, it was all glorification of the, the British. They did that, they did this, etc., etc. So this was a question which we actually sat down and we, we realized that because we did not write anything about it. That time, it was only they who had written and we, even today, we, we study that. I think the class 12, the textbook, it's all about, almost all the pages are about what the British had thought and about the Indians, very one little page, little there, talking about. So actually it is, I think it is time to rewrite the history. Mm -hmm. Certain mm -hmm. things have to be rewritten. Mm -hmm. And for that, there has to be that uh, a critical, critical analysis should be there, critical view of it. It mm -hmm. is neither blaming them nor blaming us, mm -hmm. but then the understanding has to be broadened. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to just run through the slides what we received from Matthew KG, sir, the kind of applied history education which is happening under his tutelage. Uh, uh, so activity-based history learning, the experimentations which... Uh, uh, like uh, students are participating in mock interviews, impersonating various historical figures. So th the, mo uh, the modus operandi, the instrument of theater is somewhat being utilized uh, to evoke that popular interest in history. Uh, so uh, exploring field trips to the Somanath Pura relics was arranged to give the students an insight into the Hoysala architecture and history because it becomes too morose sitting right in the classroom and uh, devouring it all. So a field experience, what he has shown is certainly a lovely, wonderful exercise. Uh, uh, the revolt of 1857, we are all talking about uh, a series of interdisciplinary activities. Uh, they were organized like Jhansi Ki Rani, uh, Madam Ansi Joseph comes from the clan of Gwalior, that historical, the geocultural locales, whatever we have. Uh, history in action, uh, theatrical production depicting the events of the French Revolution. So uh, it performing arts and history, it gets juxtaposed very beautifully. Uh, so And history simplified. The students depicted the events of the revolt uh, through comic strips. Now, this is quite an innovation, the annexation of Awadh and students doing cartoons and blobs on top of it. So quite an innovation indeed. And a puzzle from the past, uh, the students participated in a mock archaeological survey and drew inferences uh, from the same. And a Constitution Day celebration of civics comes into history. Uh, we just commemorated Dr. Rajendra Prasad's birthday yesterday, the first president of uh, the Republic and also the president of the Constituent Assembly. So civics, how our constitution got crafted. So that comes into the history as... Uh, Madam said, Jilmil Ma'am said that uh, it is an all-in-one kind of a discipline. Notice board discipline uh, display, lovely. The Constitution of India, the preamble, uh, the handwritten, uh, the original copy of India's Constitution with all its motifs and graffiti and everything. So this is a lovely and this is what Jilmil Ma'am also said that mind maps and uh, graphs over there. 
and quiz competition. Uh, so some of these, uh, so lovely, lovely if, work over yeah, there. If, if yeah. I may, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I must appreciate my teammates, the social studies teachers of my school. Most of them are present uh, in this virtual meeting also. Coming up with uh, something very, you know, out of the box ideas and thoughts to make history as interesting as uh, it can be made. So, uh, you know, these activities run across uh, various classes, various grades. Of course, this is our pedagogical approach too. For all mm -hmm. the subjects, we go kind of an interdisciplinary approach is what we follow in our school. Mm -hmm. So that you have shown this slide, I must also thank my social studies team mm -hmm. uh, who make, uh, who do everything possible to make the social studies classes very interesting. In our because it's quite classes. very tough to bring that life uh, to a very uh, intricate discipline like history. It, it's, a, it's a quite a labor as we could see from uh, the activities which were planned out there, it's not some kind of a chemistry lab experiment which you can do very easily in order to recreate that, in order to love that. So uh, at the close, we come to the close of this commemoration. So if anyone wants to come in, comment, uh, express upon, because we believe that every it should be participative out there. So if any of the uh, our audience wants to come in, have a question, have a query, have a comment to make your most welcome, please. I think I would also like to add a, a, an observation here that I find the historians, the history educators, very, very learned personalities, you know, and learned in the sense that I like very uh, rightfully, NC Joseph Mam said that it, a history student is, is, you know, humane by values. You know, each and every incident or each and every, um, you know, happening in history has some values attached to it has some learnings from it. As uh, Matthew sir said, that history repeats itself. If we learn from history, it wouldn't repeat. We wouldn't repeat our mistakes. And somewhere I feel that history is also shaping your conscience. Right? Because of tomorrow, you are deeply anchored in the understanding of your nation, of your ethos, of your civilization. You know, how you respond to situations, how you respond to different uh, people, the, the leaders of tomorrow, I mean, they may be doctors, they may be engineers, they may be politicians, they may be chartered accountants, but if they have a profound understanding of where they have come from, why they are the way they are today, and how they will be tomorrow, I think it is all very, very much linked. You know, I am a medical, uh, I'm a doctor uh, by profession, I had medical education all my life, but I used to love history. The way history was taught to us in school, you know, the very importance it, it said that had it not been for our freedom fighters, the the, the Republic of today, you know, the importance of elite, uh, if you see Keshav Balram Hed Gemaji, you know, we call him Dr. G. So the each and every professional of today has not to be limited only to his segmented education. If he wants to contribute to society holistically, mm -hmm. the understanding of the nation, of the society, of how different, as uh, Madam Rajinal uh, Das also said, and uh, Nancy Joseph Mam also said, it's all integrated in one history subject, in one history class. So many other in disciplines are integrated. So it's very, very important. And thus, knowing your school, knowing your family, knowing your profession, biology, mathematics, computer sciences, what is the history of it all? It's, it's, it's so very pertinent to a profound, making a profound professional and a successful leader. I think, I think uh, this uh, humble effort from Rethink India is, is to further you know, reinforce the importance of history as a subject, not just as a subject for the school curriculum, but for shaping the future minds, you know, and giving them the power, the values, the ethos, which our uh, new India, our, uh, you know, Atmanirbhar Bharat very much needs. So we come to the close of this lovely commemoration. We pay our humble obeisances to the spirit of uh, Professor Asri Majumdar, sir, in whose honor, on whose birthday we are commemorating, we have organized this uh, history forum. And as it emerged from uh, the deep uh, narratives from our history educators uh, who are who were felicitated today, that the applied part of history, I think that is where the focus has to go further as to how we can use history, the tool of history, the instrument of history, the discipline of history, uh, it's applied manifestations for the human welfare. I think a lot is hidden uh, out there. It has to be brought about further. And as Matthew says, student uh, 
he in fact abstracted it all like by way of history teaching how he got inspired and uh, got an anchoring into his entire academia into his entire i would say uh, uh, career trajectory further and forward i think that is quite a uh, inspiring uh, uh, a quite an inroad for all of us and uh, the kind of experimentations with madam joseph is doing uh, at sindhya vidya mandir and jilmili ma'am uh, they are all noteworthy and we hope that the history educators from across the country would really get inspired from the this triumvirate of history educators who have furthered the cause of the history and culture of indian people with a futuristic perspective into mind uh, we thank you all for uh, your uh, participation out here and uh, uh, we uh, again uh, pay our tributes to you all and uh, with this uh, namaskar we we'll close uh, today's session thank you so thank much thank you thank you thank you so much uh, thank you. everything india